workable prototype of the internet came in the late 1960s with the creation of ARPANET. ARPANET adopted the Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol, TCP IP, on January 1, 1983. From there, researchers began to assemble the network of networks, which became the modern internet. Our online world took a more recognizable form in 1990, when computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web. The first mobile phone with internet connectivity was launched in 1996. Today there are about 7 billion devices connected to the internet. Country events prevent gatherings in person at the present time, but still, we have this way to gather together. Though distant, connected. So here again, on this world of Earth, continent of North America, country of the United States of America, state of Michigan, county of Kent, city of Grand Rapids, at the virtual corner of Library Place and Fountain Street, where one gathers with many to free the mind, grow the soul, and change the world, both real and virtual. I'm Amy Preston, your talker for today. And on behalf of the clergy, staff, and members here, welcome to Fountain Street Church.
every week there comes a moment in which we put our trust and our faith and our hope into action. With the collection of our offering every week, we practice a little bit of hope and faith and trust and belief that our small gifts contribute to something even bigger than ourselves and maybe even bigger than anything we can imagine. This is something we've done for over 150 years, and this is something that we continue to do because we believe that we have the power as a gathered community to make a difference in this church and beyond these walls in this community. As you all know, 50% of the gifts that we collect week after week stay here to make this ministry and this legacy possible to go on into the future. And 50% goes right out these walls into the greatest needs among us and into impacts and into organizations that, like us, believe that our collected gifts and spirit can make a bigger difference in the world. This in itself is a prayer, an embodied prayer, a prayer of faith and hope and love and trust. It is a prayer that we say week after week after week, and as we put our gifts into the plate or through a text message or in the mail, it is our way of saying amen. And so with that spirit, I invite each of you to give freely and generously as you are able as the offering will now be taken.
past few years, some of us Fountain Streeters in this very chapel have been creating, building, expanding on a wheel of the year. It's a calendar which we reference and use as a tool to help ground us as to where we are in the seasons, where we are leading, where we are right now, and where we are going. Currently, we are at that point in the calendar just after the midway point between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox. It's a time called Lama's Day, the first harvest celebration of the season, and a time to reap the benefits of what has been sown so far. It's also a time for gathering and remembering. Not only should you reap the benefits of what you have done with your toils, but you should also remember where you have been. The combination of the two is what we're going to be talking about today. But we're not going to be talking about it in a relatively vague way. About as vague as it can come. Because today, we're going to talk about something. Literally, something. The word. Two syllables. Originally, two words. Some and Thing first got engaged in the 1300s. They proclaimed their union with the symbolic hyphen. And pleasantly, or maybe procrastinatingly, they enjoyed an exceptionally long engagement. It wasn't until the 1700s, about 400 years later, that Some and Thing finally tied the knot and joined as one word, something. Generally classified as an indefinite pronoun, it is a solitary assertive existential singular thing indefinite pronoun to be something more precise. Though on occasion, something has been known to roam the back alleys of grammar, getting all up in the adjectives and verbs' faces as an adverb. When formally attired, something is defined as an unspecified or unknown thing, or if you don't like using part of the word to define the word, an object that one need not, cannot, or does not wish to give a specific name. Though when donning more casual wear, well, that's when something really shines. It combines a vagueness with an undefined yet understood specificity. It can mean a moderate degree of quality. Chip is something of an artist, or a person or thing that is superlative or notable in some way. Christopher's really something. I've never heard such spectacular piano playing, or a quality that is difficult to specify. She has a certain something. Now, I get it, I get it. You are probably already wondering, where is Amy going with this? Does she really think she can speak for 10 to 15 minutes about a two-syllable thing-type pronoun? Well, yeah, I think I can. Because you see, last year, 2019, which seems so long ago now, was a year in which we at Fountain Street celebrated our 150th year. We had events throughout the year. Good times, luncheons, beer unveilings, indoor street parties because it might rain, homecoming dances, and at every one of these events, someone was bound to say, you yeah, know, there's just something about this place. Or there is something about Fountain Street. Time and time again, fairly certain I said it myself a time or two. And as we are now at that point in the calendar of the year, the commencement of the season of harvest, this is a moment to take a breath before we are supposed to reap what we have thrown, sown throughout the year. As challenging of a year it has been, this is a good time to reflect on the something of Fountain Street. The something of Fountain Street could be its mere physical presence. With its footprint at the corner of Library Place and Fountain Street, the building and its contents are inspiring. There is something almost phoenixly mythical about our original building burning in 1917 and then being replaced by what we have here. The forethought of designing this to serve not only as our church but also 
is a community gathering place is inspiring we also have our bell tower in our tower room dedicated to the memory of those slain in the war it's part of the grand rapids official world war one memorial and part of the city we have stained glass windows designed created and placed with meaning message and intent throughout we have amazing art that is gorgeously displayed throughout our halls and our rooms. Catherine the Great, our 8,000 pipe organ, that, that for lack of a better word, just rules. You feel something just walking in the building at Fountain Street Church. But though the building is part of the something of Fountain Street, the history of Fountain Street adds its own something. Now granted, being one of the first large religiously liberal churches in a notably conservative city certainly helped create a reputation of something, but it is our history of action that has confirmed that reputation as fact. Our ministers have not shied away from righteous social justice causes before they are popular causes or engaging in impassioned intellectual discourse going all the way back to 1928 when our own senior minister debated Clarence Darrow. Is there a general purpose in the universe? Walking into the North X or sanctuary and knowing you are in the same place where Winston Churchill, Eleanor Roosevelt, Amelia Earhart, Malcolm X, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Ella Fitzgerald, Duke Ellington, and you two have been well, it makes you feel something. Ultimately, though, it's the members, the congregation, the people of Fountain Street, past, present, and future, that with the physical presence and history of Fountain Street, give it its something. It does not matter if they're physically fit as a fiddle or if you struggle to get out of bed each morning. When needed, you can count on a Fountain Streeter to be there energized, knowing you are not alone. You can count on a Fountain Streeter to bring intellectual curiosity and an open mind to discussions, to conversations, such that, when finished, the collective knowledge shared from different backgrounds, perceptions, and experiences made everyone smarter. You can count on a Fountain Street experience, where whether we are meditating together, crying together, laughing together, or just being silent together. Our hearts grow and our place in the universe grows a little bit bigger. Five months ago we were gathering physically at Fountain Street Church on Sundays and frequently not seeing one another again until the following Sunday. But then phys physical gatherings came to a screeching heart, halt and in a very short time frequently through trial and error and helping each other, we became really good at Zooming, YouTube, YouTubing, video conferencing, recording talks. We have not missed a single Sunday service. We were doing two Sunday services until the summer series started in June. Our senior minister search committee continued its tasks. Our membership voted approval on our new senior minister, befrienders, continued befriending, town hall meetings continued, coffee get-togethers continued virtually. We have had some of the best attendance at board meetings from members and congregants since we've been doing meetings virtually. We have adapted. We always knew we could do Fountain Street in person. Now we also know we can do Fountain Street in the world. And that's something. One of the responsibilities I find less fun on the governing board is during the annual pledge drive season. When the stewardship committee gives board members names to contact with follow-up telephone calls. Some people I know are fine making phone calls like that, but, but me, I struggle. It is hard for me to do. And, and, and I do exactly what you'd expect me to do. First, I, I try to pawn off my phone calls on fellow board members. And I will do their, their, their shifts at tables. I will stuff envelopes every weekend when they're supposed to be doing it. Please make my phone calls. 
but they're they're wise to my ways so that usually fails and then I have to go to my old standby move which is just procrastination and that works for a week or two until Paul approaches me plays good guy hey Amy you think you can get your calls done this afternoon it's raining outside probably a, a good day to go home after service and and, and make a few phone calls, don't you think? You know, I appreciate it. Update me afterwards. Thanks. Good good to see you. And he walks away. And, you know, you don't want to disappoint Paul. But I know there's a good chance I will. Until, well, until the hairs on the back of your neck start to stand in attention. And, and you turn around, and there's Bob. This big, friendly, cheery smile. And he walks up to you and he goes, hey, Aim, man, your fingernails, they look nice. All your fingers, they seem to be not broken. Capable of using a phone, making phone calls. It'd be a shame if one or eight of them got broken because they weren't making phone calls, if you know what I mean. Well, I, I always know what he means. So I do make my phone calls and this year, I, I made my phone calls and the first ones you make you kind of just hope it goes to voicemail at least that's what I do and you're, you're counting for the four rings you know one ring you know answer the people rarely answer but nobody answers with unrec unrecognized phone numbers anymore do they two rings you're halfway there three wing rings is that that's when they, they the phones were being picked up and you know what it, it turns out I'm glad that, that, that Bob threatened to break, break my fingers because I had some great conversations with Fountain Streeters. And I don't know why the list was such this year, but the list I had this year was a number of Fountain Streeters that no longer live in Grand Rapids. They're all over the world. Some have not been here for years. Some are permanently out of Grand Rapids. Some are temporarily or seasonally out of Grand Rapids. And some, well, some are just on a well-deserved vacation. Free your mind, grow your soul, change the world. At Fountain Street, we are really good at freeing our minds. Likewise, we're awesome at growing our souls. And we do make great strides in changing the world with all that we do locally in the community and with the support we give for global causes. But maybe we can do more. And maybe this is just making lemonade out of lemons in the challenging year that we've had so far. But we have sown and are reaping the benefits of learning how to virtual. And that just might make things easier for us to change the world, especially when we have Fountain Streeters all over the world. I know we are all anxious for when we can congregate in person once again, see each other's smiles, share a comforting hug, Feel the voices throughout. Exciting times and a bright future we have. But until that time comes, it is comforting to know we have figured out a way without missing a beat to still be here for each other while always being Fountain Street. Now isn't that something? Go in peace and love.
My friends, thank you for being with us this morning for this beautiful Sunday of worship together. A special thank you to Amy Preston for your inspiring and uplifting words. Thank you to Phil Pletcher for your beautiful and moving music. Thank you to Danny Hack who makes these services possible and thank you to the Religious Services Committee who curate this beautiful and thoughtful collection of voices every summer. And of course, thank you to each of you who continues to show up and call this your spiritual home. On behalf of the staff and on all of those who have made these services possible, thank you. I invite all of you to go forth from this worship service renewed, rejuvenated, nurtured, and nourished. And until we meet again, be safe, stay healthy, and remain resilient. Go in peace, my friends.